We're going to talk about LCM. What's LCM stand for? Least common multiple. All right, least common multiple. Um, we do this when we try to find common denominators. We find the least common multiple. And most people your age confuse least common multiple with greatest common factor. So if I said, what's the, great, what's the least common multiple of 10 and 12? Half of you would probably say two, okay? Because you, you confuse it with the greatest common factor. Well, two is the greatest common factor of 10 and 12, but the least common multiple is what? 60, is that right? So factors are what go into numbers. Multiples are what numbers go into. You see the difference? Okay. So least common multiple. So if I said, what's the least common multiple of four, five, and eight? Can you guys figure that out in your head? You know? 40. 40, I think you're right. The, what I usually do is I usually take that biggest one and I say, um, let's see, eight, 16. Well, six, four goes in, four is gonna go into everything that eight does, right? Because four goes into eight. So I don't really need to, List those, 40, boom, boom. Okay, so I usually take the big one and I stop it. There's another crazy way uh, when we use, when we did this, I don't know if you guys remember doing this with factor trees, you factor tree it out, well, that's just five. And then this is two times four, and that's two times two. So this is two to the third. So then the least common multiple is the greatest of each factor. So the least common multiple is going to be, let's see here. There's a two squared and a two to the third. And then there's a five to the first. There's no other five. So it's going to be two cubed times five, which is 40. Okay. So you're looking for the biggest exponent of each factor. Okay, um, so this, we're gonna use this when it comes to algebra. And in algebra, finding the least common multiple, I think is a little bit easier. Okay, so you're just looking for the biggest exponent of each factor, okay? So let's try another one. Let's see if you can do this this way. So you just look for the greatest exponent of each factor. So find the least common multiple of 18, 81, and 500. Okay, so make factor trees out of all three of those and then see if you can figure out the least common multiple. I'll give you a hint, it's a five digit number. It's a big one. I still factor tree in. It's a verb. Okay, 
I'm going to start right behind you. Is that what you got for factor trees? 18 is 2 times 3 times 3, or 2 times 3 squared. 81 is 3 to the fourth. 500 is 2 squared. Is that 2 squared? 2 squared times 5 cubed. Is that what you guys got for factor trees? Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we could multiply it all together, and that'll give us a common multiple, but not the least common multiple. Yep. So let's look at the twos. What's the greatest two? There's a two here to the first power. Is that the greatest two? No, what's the greatest two? Two squared. So we're going to include a two squared. Okay. All right. What's the greatest three? Yep, there's a three squared there, no threes over there, three to the fourth here. Okay, and then what's the greatest, what's the last one, five? Only has one over here, so it's just five to the third. So when you multiply all that out, you get four times 81 times 125, you get this number, 40,500. Anybody get that? Cool. And you don't even have to multiply it out. If you got this, then that's good enough. Okay? Because um, this is what it's really going to be like in algebra. Because we're not going to have numbers. We're going to have variables like x times y squared or y to the fourth, x squared z to the third. Okay? So when you do that, and then you'll just have x squared, y to the fourth, z to the third, and you're done. You don't have to multiply anything out because they're not the same base, right? So that is basically lesson 43. This is review. So that was a nice little, nice little uh, review lesson. Okay, you guys feel okay about 43? Remember doing this? Okay, and this was... This, this method of finding the least common multiple was more of an option in the past, but now it's like what you have to do in algebra. But again, in algebra, it's going to be way easier than this. The numbers aren't going to be this big at all. They're, they might not even be two digits most of the time, if you even have numbers, okay? So the next lesson, we're going to dig into what that means with algebra, okay? All right, um, let's move on to 44. Okay, so 44, remember we talked about the whole purpose of finding uh, least common multiple is a good application of that is adding fractions, right? Well, now we're going to add fractions, but we're going to do it in algebra. And it's always nice when you start with the common denominators, like for if you have three fifths minus two fifths, what's three fifths minus two fifths? 
one fifth. Okay. When you add or subtract fractions, you just make sure you have the same denominator. And if you do, you just add or subtract the numerators and you're done. Okay, so this works the same way with algebra. So look at this. What's four over complicated algebraic expression minus six AX over complicated algebraic expression? Well, you have common denominator, so what do you do? You just subtract the numerators. Now, can you combine those terms? No. So you just write it out. And that's the answer. Okay, so if you have the same denominator, then just all you're doing most of the time is literally copying those things down. If it's subtraction, 4 minus 6ax. If it's addition, you just add them. And most of the time, you won't be able to combine any like terms. So you're just rewriting stuff. Okay? The only difference between this problem and then the answer is that this is one fraction and this is two. So that's what it means to add or subtract is you're combining things into one thing. Okay? Sometimes... Sometimes you can't, like this whole thing, four minus six AX, you're just done there. Okay, so let's uh, see if you guys can do this. So five X plus seven, all over five A squared X, minus three X minus two, all over five A squared X. So see if you can, Combine those or subtract those fractions. And be careful, there is a little bit of a tricky part to this, but I'm just don't feel pressure to figure it out. Just do what you would normally do. Don't try to figure out the trick. Do what you normally do. Mm -hmm. Is it two x minus five over five x squared x? Okay, that's very close. The two x is perfect. Okay, um, but what happens when you seven minus minus two? So you're subtracting this whole thing. So it's a little bit, a little bit different. So that instead of a five, it's a nine. Okay, but that was a, that was the only tricky part. But that's what most people will do. Most people will do that. Okay. So let's just step this out. All this is is five x plus seven minus. You're subtracting this whole fraction, right? So you have to subtract this whole thing. How do you subtract the whole thing? You put it in parentheses, okay? And you can do that if you want to. And it's still over the same denominator. The denominator doesn't change, okay? So now we're subtracting 5x minus 3x. We can combine those to 2x, but then it's 7 minus minus 2. If there weren't parentheses here, then it would just be minus 3x minus 2. So it would be 7 minus 2, which is 5. But there has to be parentheses there because you're subtracting this whole numerator. So this is a very common mistake in this class and in Algebra 2. And everywhere else, students will continue to struggle with this. Okay? So don't stress. Don't, don't beat yourself up if you get these wrong. But show your work. So we can show, so I can help you figure out what you did wrong, okay? So this is actually, if I do it this way, I'm chicken scratching, I'm chicken scratching this whole parentheses so everything in here gets oppositized. So it's seven plus two, which is nine, all over that same denominator, five a squared x, okay? All right, so that's nice because it has the same denominator. So um, we're going to move on to the next part, which is basically adding fractions with 
not a common denominator. Now, this is not going to be as difficult as you could imagine it could be. That was confusing. But let's, let me uh, write an example, and we'll try it. Three-fourths plus 2 over B. Okay. Well, first of all, the factors, like if I wanted to find the least common multiple of 4 and B, I would factor tree that out. It would be 2 squared, and B would just be B. They have nothing in common. So what happens when you have no factors in common? Yeah, you just multiply them together. So if you had 3 fourths and 2 fifths, 4 and 5 have nothing in common, correct? So what's the common denominator of 4 and 5? Squish them together, and it's 20, right? Okay, and then how do you find the new numerator? Well, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Well, if I, this is 4B, so I'm going to multiply the bottom by B. So if I multiply the bottom by B, multiply the top by B. Okay, the way you can check to see if you did this right is simplify that. If you cancel the Bs, you're back where you started. That's right. So I like doing these with different colors because you can see what you started with and how you're changing it. Well, what does this need to look like that? It needs a four. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom by four, multiply the top by four, not 42. So put a dot there. Okay, now we simplify. Well, that's just three B. Can't simplify that anymore. And then what's four times two? Eight. So that's all over 4B. It doesn't feel like we did any math. And that's what algebra feels like a lot. Where you're just squishing stuff together and then rewriting stuff. Okay? The only kind of math that we did was this four times two, and that wasn't too difficult. Everything else, we just made everything look like each other. We just, you have to, your goal is to make the denominators look like each other. And technically, what you're doing to make them look like each other is multiplying. But when it comes to letters and variables, if you just add a B or tag on a B, add is a really poor choice of words. But if you tag on a B to the bottom, tag on a B at the top. If you tag on a four at the bottom, tag on a four in the top, okay? Let's try another one. See if you guys can do this on your own here. Try this one. Four over B plus one over C plus one half. Okay. So you can, um, you don't have to use different colors, but I'm going to use different colors so you can see the changes I make. That's cool. No, I miss the feel of the markers in my hands. It's just like, did I ever tell you the first time I wanted to be a teacher I was in first grade. And my teacher, we had chalkboards back then. And the chalk, the teachers didn't want to get chalk all over their hands. So they had these little metal capsules that they put the chalk in. Have you seen those? And so my first grade teacher, which I think I had a crush on her, but you know, it's a young boy. I think her name was Mrs. Blomgren. She stole my heart. But, um, but she used to do this. She was married, unfortunately. Not that I would have had a chance, but whatever. Um, but she, uh, she had a wedding ring and then she would do this with her chalk. 
and it was so cool. I was like, wow, I want to be a teacher someday so I could do that with my chalk. So I just missed the feel of this is like what made me want to be a teacher. And then other things made me, I mean, I like math and I like teaching and I like, I like kids, I guess, whatever. But um, that was what kind of like, wow, I'm going to do that when I grow up. I want to do that with my chalk. All right. So um, our first goal is to make all these denominators look the same. Okay. So what does this B need? What does this C need? And what does this 2 need? Well, how do you figure out the common denominator? What do you do? Yeah, you just squish all these together because these have nothing in common. Okay, if there was a B and like a B squared, then we have to figure out the biggest exponent or whatever. But these have nothing in common. So you just squish them together. So it looks like this one needs a 2 and a C, right? And so I'm going to multiply the top by 2 and C. Actually, you know what you should do first? Since you don't have different colors, what I would recommend is write it twice. So you have one where you still see the original problem because if you start penciling in things, then it's hard to see the changes that you made. So it's nice to have the original problem there at all times. Okay, but I'm still gonna use different colors. So this needs a two and a C. Uh, this one needs a two and a B. And this one needs a B and a C, right? Does that make sense so far? So you can't just go around changing denominators without changing the numerators. So if I multiply the bottom by BC, I multiply the top by BC. If I multiply this bottom by 2B, multiply the top by 2B. Okay, if I multiply the bottom by 2C, multiply the top by 2C. See what I did? So far so good? Again, I don't feel like I've done any math yet. So now I'm gonna multiply, I'm gonna simplify the top. So I'm gonna simplify two times four times C. What's two times four times C? Eight C. And then what's two times B times one? Yep, two B. And then what's one times B C? BC, right? And then two times BC is still two BC. Okay, so now that you have all the same denominators, you can add, you don't really need to do this step. You could probably figure out from here to here. Okay, so it's AC plus two B plus BC. Still, they all kind of look similar, but they're not like terms, right? They have to have every variable the same with the same exponents. Okay, so this only has a C, this only has a B, and this has a B and C. So they're not like terms. So just rewrite it. And here's your final answer. 8C plus 2B plus BC over 2BC. That's terrible. I know, it's not very satisfying, is it? Like, I love the days when the answer was like four. Those are nice. Those days are gone. It's suspicious when the answer is two. Yeah. I'm always like, Wait a minute. Did I do something wrong? Yeah. Well, I always get suspicious when you end up with a fraction or something like, wait a minute. Something's wrong. So, but like when it's too easy too, it's a little suspicious. Okay. So, um, if you want to look at the steps, how long has this been turned around? board and see the steps to solving <laughs> equations and we're like okay oh how embarrassing you totally thought that. okay well um so i'm not going to write the steps to well I'll, I'll write them here i guess steps to adding fractions or subtracting first step find lcd right least common denominator it's usually just squishing them together okay and then step two, um, find new numerators. 
Okay, sometimes you change the numerator, sometimes you don't. If you don't change the denominator, if one of the denominators is the least common denominator, so you know, like when you're adding three fourths plus five eighths, you don't, the common denominator is eight, so you don't change the five eighths, right? So find new numerators. Remember, whatever you do to the bottom, do the top. Whatever you do to the bottom, golden rule. Do to the top. Okay, and then the last step is nice. You're just adding or subtracting numerators. All over that same denominator. You don't add the denominators, you just leave the denominators the same. So it's easy to forget things like that when you're in algebra mode. But when you're just adding fractions normally, none of you would add the denominators. That's so like math seven-ish, right? You would never do that. But in algebra, it's, it's easy to forget those simple rules because it's, you're looking at letters and your mind will play tricks on you, okay? So I'm gonna do two more examples and then we'll be done, okay? So let me erase this. Maybe I'll just keep the bottom here because it's nice information. A nice little example that you can look to. Mm -hmm. If I do the practice test like in class, can that count towards um, Slack attack coupons, yeah. Okay. Yep, and we'll have time to do a little bit of that. Okay, so two more examples. Here's an example M over C cubed plus 4 over C squared. Okay, now we have similar factors. So let's figure that out. Remember, the least common multiple or least common denominator is the biggest exponent of each factor. Well, first of all, what's the denominator here? Yeah, it's just one. So put a one under, under it. So when you're adding fractions, add fractions. Don't add fractions with whole numbers, okay? Convert them all to fractions. All right. So another way to look at this is how do I make the C squared look like C cubed? What does this C squared need to look like that? Another C, that's right. So I'm going to multiply this by another C. Whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. Okay, how do you make this guy look like C cubed? Because that's our least common denominator, right? Least common denominator is biggest exponent of each factor. And don't forget factors are like variables. Okay, so the biggest exponent is C cubed. So LCD equals C cubed. So we gotta make every denominator a C cubed. So this just needs a C, this needs the whole thing. This needs a C cubed. Whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify the tops and rewrite the numerator all in one step. So I've got M, because I didn't change that at all, I didn't need to, because C cubed is already the least common denominator, plus 4C minus 6C cubed all over C cubed, and you're done. Yeah, it's all good. That's it. We accomplished the goal of combining three fractions into one. It's an ugly one, but it's a one fraction, okay? All right, one more example. Let's see if you guys can do this on your own. Here we go. A over C squared, three over four C cubed, M over three C to the fourth. Okay, so I'm gonna get you started with just trying to find that least common denominator. Least common denominator, you still do the numbers the same way. If you were adding one fourth 
plus two thirds, what would the denominator be? One fourth plus two thirds, what's the common denominator? Four and three. 12, you just multiply them together because they don't share any factors. So the numerical part of the least common denominator is gonna be 12, okay? So you're gonna have something over 12, right? 12 what? So what else goes there? So try to figure that out and do this problem. Hey, what'd you get for the least common denominator? Yep, so you're just looking for the biggest exponent of the C's. You got C squared, C cubed, C fourth. That's easy, C to the fourth. Okay, so now we, our goal now is to make all these denominators look like this. Okay, how do you make C squared look like 12 C to the fourth? What does it need? It needs a 12, and then how many more C's does it need? Two, so it's another C squared. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Nice, right? Okay, how do you make 4C cubed look like 12C to the fourth? Yep, you need a times three. And then how do you make C cubed look like C to the fourth? And one more C. Oops. Oh. Okay, whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. Don't be confused by that three up there. There's, wait, there's already a three up there. Wait, I get confused. Don't let your mind take control. <laughs> Follow the steps. Whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. No matter what that top looks like, do it, okay? All right, how do you make a three C to the fourth look like 12 C to the fourth? Multiply by four, that's right. Okay, so now I've got, let's see, 12 AC squared plus three times three times C, nine C plus four M. It's a little satisfying just to be able to finish it, but it would be a lot more satisfying if it was a little more skinny. Not so large denominator. Okay, does that feel doable? You guys will get some practice in your homework, so you can do that. Um, so we've got almost a half an hour. So you can work on this if you want to, lesson uh, 43. Wait, this uh huh. Um, for the twelve C four, shouldn't that have been nine C squared? Down here. For the denominator? So, um, for uh, the 3 over 4C cubed, I thought it was 4C squared. Yeah, that's Oh, right. okay. So, 
Okay, so great minds think alike. There you go. All right, does that make sense, guys? All right, good job. Black man, give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black man.